Hello, this is part two of the history of AMD, Advanced Micro Devices. In part one, we concluded with the Thunderbird and Duran type processors, going on to the multiprocessor from AMD. This is a time where AMD was actually a worthwhile gaming competitor, where sales were really good and AMD was really thriving like never before. Now let's get started. After many decades of success, in 2002, Jerry Saunders left his position of CEO. His vision within the company had spanned 33 years starting in 1969 and decided to retire from advanced micro devices. After these many years, a new era would begin under Hector Ruse, now taking over as CEO. Hector was the president of Motorola Semiconductor Products Sector before being recruited by AMD. Like Jerry, Hector was also an electrical engineer. January 8, 2003, IBM and AMD worked together on a new technology called Silicon on Insulator, also known as SOI. One of those engineers would later go on to work for AMD, Dr. Lisa Su. What's this? 64-bit x86 processor? Well, this was something major. The limitations of 32-bit was becoming apparent, especially when it came down to memory. So your RAM capacity was limited to 4 gigs, but only about 3.5 gigs usable. This what you're seeing right now would not be possible with only 3.5 gigs useful, because doing videos, which I'm recording right now in 4K and reducing down to 1080p, I was hitting a hard limit at 16 gigs. Divide that by four, well, we're going back to old school video. Some people might wonder, why was the video quality so hard when it came to digital video back in the day? Well, limits. Now, AMD was the first, beating Intel actually by quite some time on 64-bit versus 32-bit. You could get 64-bit, but you're talking about server market, and I believe you'd be going for the Ultra Spark or something like that for your 64-bit processing. April 22nd, 2003, AMD introduced the first 64-bit x86 CPU with the Opteron Server Class processor. The road to 64-bit was a long one that started in the year 2000, but finally, it was here and freed the computer from its 32-bit limitations. It was shortly after, on September 23rd, 2003, the Athlon 64 was released for PC. These K8 processors were a major update over the K7 architecture. This AMD 64-bit instruction set allowed systems more breathing room with much greater memory capacity beyond the 4GB limit of the 32-bit x86 instruction set. AMD implemented their first ever major update to the x86 instruction set. Intel was forced to implement a compatible 64-bit instruction. Beyond 64-bit, the K8 also implemented an on-chip memory controller as well as a very fast interconnect called HyperTransport. July 14, 2003, Fujitsu AMD Semiconductor Limited, or FASL, LLC. This joint venture was highly successful and helped AMD financially in the semiconductor business against Intel. Luckily, even during the dot-com crash, their flash memory business thrived. One year later, the successful joint venture, FASL LLC, was renamed Spansion in 2004. In 2005, flash memory prices crashed and AMD sold off the company via an IPO. By 2006, Spansion was an independent entity, continue where it left off. In 2014, Spansion would go on to merge with Cypress Semiconductor in a $4 billion all-stock transaction. In 2019, they would go on to be purchased by Infion. Advanced Micro Devices had a great CPU, but the uptake was not going well. For some reason, they appeared to be locked out of many of the markets. An investigation into what was happening was ongoing, and things definitely were looking awry. April 21st, 2005, AMD announces the world's first 64-bit multi-core CPU for servers and workstation. 
October 14th, this same year, AMD opened Fab 36 in Dredstan, Germany. This production plant, being opened six years later than Fab 30, was an expansion built adjacent to the existing Fab 30. This new production plant was made to produce 300mm wafers starting in 2006. The larger 300mm wafers would allow many more CPU cores per silicon wafer, massively expanding AMD's production capacity. This huge production facility would become known as a Mega Fab. It was made known in 2006 that from 2003 to 2006, AMD offered a line of processors that analysis and many computer makers praised for being superior to Intel's products. AMD's investigations showed that Intel hindered the adoption of these chips by offering exclusive deals. These exclusive deals offered steep discounts to those companies supplying only Intel CPUs in their systems. Should these companies start selling CPUs from other companies such as AMD, they'd end up paying far more for their supply of Intel parts. July 24, 2006, AMD bought ATI Technologies based in Toronto, Ontario, Canada for a total of $5.6 billion. This purchase provided talented employees, graphics cards, patents, new markets such as gaming consoles. AMD's big picture was the fusion of CPU and graphics, dubbed by AMD as a Fusion APU. An APU is an accelerated processing unit. The main advantage of this is when you combine the central processing unit with the graphics processing unit, they communicate together faster. Some people may consider the purchase of ATI technologies to be a mistake because it was a very costly purchase for AMD. Of course, AMD saw that the future of CPUs need graphics built into it, and they needed these patents in order to get where they want to be in the future. September 2007, AMD announced the Opteron K10 processors. Two months later in November, the Phenom processors for desktop was announced. These CPUs came in two, three, and four core variants, all on a single die. AMD for the first time made an entire chipset series themselves. With ATI by their sides, they released the R770 GPU and the 7 series chipsets. January 2008, Advanced Micro Devices opened a new Lone Star campus in Austin, Texas. It was the largest leadership in energy and environmental design certified, otherwise known as LEED certified, corporate campus in Texas. This campus came at a cost of $190 million and measured 870,000 square feet. The campus was built to train and provide more talent for those aspiring to get into the tech industry. July 18, 2008, Hector Ruz resigned as CEO after AMD reported its seventh consecutive quarterly loss. The massive debt load and pressure to push into the positive had to be hard for Hector. The purchase of ATI wasn't exactly the wrong choice, but that cost, combined with many other large expenses, added up. In the end, the huge costs of keeping up with process technologies, plus the past purchase of ATI technologies, nearly bankrupt AMD. It got to the point that a node upgrade end up costing about $3 billion. The process of fusing the CPU and GPU is happening much slower than anticipated. The ATI and AMD CPU teams had teething challenges they had to get past in order to truly work as one. Constrained by R&D budget, this was a tough battle. The future was starting to look bleak for advanced micro devices. Cash was in short supply and they needed to do something major and do it quickly or the end wouldn't be long. July 18th, 2008. Dirk Meyer, computer engineer, was appointed as the new CEO of AMD. Almost right off the bat, he had a difficult choice to make. That choice was to spin off ownership of their fabrication plants. AMD would no longer be making their own CPU. October 7, 2008, the announcement was made and it did not come without issue for advanced micro devices due to their x86 license agreement with Intel. Dirk was left with a company on the brink of death. AMD would be fabulous for the first time ever. They would go on to partner with the purchaser, owning a share in the new spin-off. This spin-off was a lifeline for AMD. 
having faced three years of negative cash flow. Abu Dhabi paid $700 million for a stake in the new company named Foundry Co. This new company will assume $1.2 billion of AMD's debt, will receive as much as $6 billion from the Abu Dhabi government to expand plants and get $1.4 billion in operating capital. Abu Dhabi's Mabadala Developments Co. will pay $314 million to double its stake in AMD to 19%. AMD stated in an email, the reason for Abu Dhabi to make this large purchase was to relieve its dependence on oil as a source of income. This new form foundry company will seek contracts from other companies to produce microchips for, while also continuing to produce designs for AMD. They will own two plants in Germany and build a factory in New York. Advanced Micro Devices will now be a microchip designer and then pay to have the foundry produce its silicon product. Regarding this purchase, Dirk Mayer, in a telephone interview, stated, it will make AMD financially stronger and more tightly focused. Foundry Co. would be renamed Global Foundries on March 2, 2009. At this time, they were owned by Advanced Technology Investment Company, Attic. Global Foundries, also known as Glowflow was later expanded through the acquisition of Chartered Semiconductor on January 23, 2010, and again through the acquisition of IBM Microelectronics, the unit that makes power processors, on July 1, 2015. Even today, Global Foundries has been making major advancements in silicon on insulator that AMD started investing in back in 2003. Silicon on insulator, also known as SOI, allows higher frequencies and has great power efficiency characteristics. However, advanced micro devices around 2012 would stop using SOI in favor of bulk silicon. But what about ATI since being acquired? June 28, 2007. AMD released the Radeon HD 2000 series of video cards with many still having the ATI logo on it. These were DirectX 10 cards with added hardware level tessellation. In NVIDIA's 8,800 cards from the 8000 series beat the HD 2000 series with ease. And to top it off, the ATI cards had much higher power requirements as well as having much louder cooling fans. August 2007, AMD released their first quad-core server CPU in the form of the AMD Operon 2300 series. November 15, 2007, AMD released the HD 3000 series of cards, and NVIDIA responds with a punch back using the 8800 GT and at a good price point to boot. However, the power consumption in the ATI cards were much improved fan noise was now brought under control, but its performance was still below that of the competition. January 28, 2008, AMD pulled a unique move rather than making one huge monolithic die, they made the Radeon HD 3870X2 with two graphics cores on one card. This provided a high-end card that competed well against NVIDIA's high-end single large GPU die, 8800 Ultra. June 25, 2008, AMD releases the HD 4000 series of cards still being under the ATI branding. AMD decides not to focus on having the fastest card money can buy. Instead, they focus on efficient designs when it came to value, these cards were a real winner. January 7, 2009, AMD released a new processor line named Venom 2 with four cores built using the 45 nanometer process. The Venom 2 sees performance uplifts of up to 30% with an increased L3 CPU cache from 2 megabytes to 6 megabytes. Higher clock speeds as well as cool and quiet idle tech is applied to the entire CPU core rather than a per core that interfered with Windows performance in the previous Venom.
Around January 12, 2009, AMD, due to financial struggles, announced that it would eliminate 1,100 jobs, and the company also took a $622 million impairment charge related to the 2006 acquisition of ATI. The impairment charge is basically a way of saying it overpaid for ATI. This charge is basically a devaluation of advanced micro devices as a company dubbed a goodwill charge. AMD per stock share was only worth about $2, while in February 10th, 2006, a month before the purchase of ATI, their stock was worth $40 per share. It was not since 1990 that advanced micro devices had dropped so low in value. January 19th, 2009, AMD sells its graphics and multimedia technology assets to Qualcomm for $65 million. With this sale, Qualcomm obtains both patents and employees from AMD's handheld division. September 23, 2009, AMD released the ATI HD 5000 series of cards that continued with being great value but not winning the performance race. The 5000 series of cards brought good power efficiency, especially in idle states where they previously lagged behind. April 2010, AMD released the Phantom 2 with 6 cores. November 2010, the FTC fined Intel $1.25 billion for anti-competitive behavior. The 2006 investigation showing Intel gave special deals to companies that supplied only Intel products. October 22, 2010, the Radeon HD 6000 series of graphics cards are released under the AMD name for the first time. The cards remain much of the same, aiming at the mid-range, selling it at a very good price point. March 29, 2010, AMD's Magni Cores CPU series are released. Yes, Magni Cores, a play on the word, many cores. With the Optron 12 core monster in the server market, the large 6 plus 6 core CPU on a single package would use the large socket G34. A CPU this size was ahead of its time. While the cores weren't particularly groundbreaking at its performance per core level, each of the two CPU dies were a rather large 346mm square connected together through a massive 24-link hypertransport communication pipeline. This beast competed against Intel's 6-core Xeon processor that measured at only 248 millimeters square. June 23, 2010, AMD introduced the availability of the Opteron 4000 series platform with up to six cores, similar cores to the 12 core CPU, but only one die using a smaller socket size named C32. The 4000 series were built with power saving in mind and included new low power idle states. January 4, 2011, AMD launches the first Fusion APU. Finally, we have what AMD's purchase of ATI was to bring to the table. This tech would later bring many future opportunities. January 10th, 2011, Dirk Meyer resigns as CEO of AMD. August 25th, 2011, Roy Reed is the new CEO, having previously worked at IBM and Levino. November 2011, Roy Reed announced that Advanced Micro Devices plans to cut approximately 10% of the company's global workforce. January 9, 2012, AMD releases the Radeon HD 7000 series, this time being released just months before NVIDIA's Not Yet Out 600 series helped its initial sales launch. February 2012, AMD buys C-Micro, a low-power, dense design server vendor whom at the time is one of Intel's closest business server partners, for a total of $334 million in cash and stock. It bought the company primarily for its technology, which it hoped to license to other server vendors. March 4, 2012, AMD announced they divested their final 14% stake in Global Foundries. This concluded AMD's multi-year plan to divest itself of its manufacturing arm. June 13, 2012, AMD adds ARM Trust Zone Security to its x86 CPUs. 
showing they take security of their products seriously. This would be called a Platform Security Processor, or PSP, later renamed to AMD Secure Processor. December 7, 2012, AMD significantly reduced its order for silicon wafers from global boundaries due to a massively lower sales volume being far lower than expected and agreed to. Originally, AMD agreed to purchase $500 million worth of wafers, but reduced this down to a meager $115 million. Providing such short notice, AMD had to pay Global Foundries a $320 million penalty. October 18, 2012, Advanced Micro Devices lays off 15% of its workforce as it attempts to inch back to profitability. The company will lay off close to 1,800 of its 11,813 employees. They will also shut down offices as part of a larger restructuring effort. Profits fell from across the board due to weak demand and lower selling prices. Revenue from computing solutions, which deals in chips, fell 28% year over year. Revenue for graphics units, graphics cards and boards declined by 15% year over year. October 8, 2013, the Radeon 200 series is first released, having a great price-to-performance ratio. The R9, 290, and the 290X were hot performers that nipped at the hills of the Titan GPU, but at a much lower cost. November 15, 2013, the Sony PlayStation 4 is released, with a semi-custom AMD 8-core Jaguar CPU and AMD Radeon graphics. Only one week later, the Microsoft Xbox One would also be released with a similar semi-custom design. All of Sony's and Microsoft's gaming system CPU and GPU designs from this day forth have been made by AMD. These deals give advanced micro devices some much needed cash. These design wins are also a testament to price, performance, and quality all made possible through the past purchase of ATI technologies. July 2014 Mantle version 1.0 was released in AMD's Catalyst GPU software. Mantle is a low overhead 3D rendering API made to reduce CPU bottlenecks in low-end systems in order to speed up graphics processing. Designed as an alternative to Direct3D and OpenGL, in 2015 Vulkan took over where Mantle left off but it was not till 2019 that Mantle support would be completely discontinued. In the end, Mantle pushed Microsoft to improve the performance through DirectX 11 and 12 APIs. October 8, 2014, Roy Reed steps down as CEO and would go on to work for Dell Computers. This same day, Lisa Su became the new CEO of Advanced Micro Devices. Lisa Su, like Jerry Saunders that founded AMD, was also an electrical engineer. Before coming to AMD, she worked for Texas Instruments, IBM, and Freescale Semiconductor. She also became known for her work on developing silicon on insulator. November 20th, 2014, AMD introduces FreeZinc, an open standard that can be used by anyone without the added cost of royalty fees. AMD FreeZinc was also known as Adaptive Zinc. It is simply the AMD branding and specifications of it, so bringing this technology beyond what laptops can do onto the desktop. This concludes part two of a multi-part series of the history of AMD. Thank you for watching and have yourselves a wonderful day. This is not BIOS, tech and hardware.